as you know, previously uh, we talked about language disorders and speech disorders. The difference between speech and language and language disorder and speech disorder. We talked about uh, expressive language disorders and we talked about receptive language disorders. Now, today, we have to figure out some of the language disorders that we really have. Now, for some of the disorders, uh, they are directly linked to language disorders. And there are some other disorders which are indirectly linked to language disorders. Usually, humans think that perhaps they are you know, normal human beings. But actually, even we are normal human beings, there are still you know, different categories. Some people are normally normal, some people are, you know, a little normal, some people are a little more than normal, and then, you know, there are people who have got certain exceptional skills as well. At times, at times, I'm saying at times, we also consider them abnormal, because they have got some exceptional skills. Now, people, those people who have got some exceptional skills, for example, uh, they are not normal. Like normal means that there are, you know, so you see uh, 200,000 people and one of them is having exceptional skills. So that is not considered normal, although the person is doing such a normal thing. So, in language disorders, uh, language disorders, speech disorders, communication disorders. Now, I'm just going to write a few disorders, we'll be talking about it. And then we can also, you know, attach them to these disorders, whether it is a communication disorder or it is a speech disorder or it's a language disorder. Now, one thing which is very important to be clarified is that speech disorders are only related to or linked with sounds, your speech. It does not necessarily include your writing because language includes both your speaking as well as your writing. In speech disorders, we have problems with production of sounds, whereas in language disorders, we have problems with sounds as well as with symbols, as well as with writing. So, the very first disorder that you need to talk about, uh, that is called sensory uh, sensory impairment of sensory disorder. Impairment or disorder, right? Now, actually, when you talk about sensory impairment, it is related to your senses, mostly with your eyes and your ears. Of course, your hands are also important when you're doing for writing. Now, sensory impairment actually is when either you are hard of hearing or you have got some visual impairments. Now, those students, those children in particular, uh, those who have, you know, this uh, hard of hearing stuff, I mean, deafness we might call it. Why it happens on children? Because, you know, usually they have kind of uh, infection areas, and that infection leads to deafness. So, if you are deaf, so definitely your intake is not clear. It's not proper. As a result, your output is having kind of problems as far as language is concerned. You cannot hear properly, so once you cannot hear properly, uh, you have problems in producing language, whether it is written or it is spoken. Similarly, uh, blindness, right, when you can't see properly. Now see, for example, if I'm teaching and uh, I can't see you people, I'm just talking with you people. Maybe somebody starts, uh, you know, stands up and starts dancing in front of me. I don't know what is happening in front of me. Second point, uh, point in this is, I mean, if there is a student who is visually impaired, now when teacher while teaching or parents while talking, they are having some non-verbal communication. Like they say, this much, the person was standing like this. Now this posture, a student cannot understand, cannot see why, a child cannot see why, because the child is visually impaired. So therefore, the communication does not take place completely. So initially, these sensory disorders, if children have, if students have, so they can have problems in language learning, language acquisition, language production, so on and so forth. 
Second problem in this regard that we need to discuss, we call it apraxia. Now, apraxia overall, actually, uh, this is a general term. It's a general term. It refers to abnormalities in body. For example, in your uh, arms, your hands, your legs. When your hands, for example, they do not work properly. When your legs, they do not work properly. Yeah, but you want to jump, you cannot. You want to, you know, uh, take something. And, and, and you cannot actually. For example, uh, this is a marker. This is here, like this. Right? I just want to take it so that uh, it, it happens like that. Because my hands are not working properly. They are not moving. So when you don't have your plexia, whatever your target is, you approach that target in a very good way, in an appropriate way. But when you have apraxia, right, you have problems. Now, why apraxia uh, takes place? Why? Because there are certain problems in the motor control area. Wherever, you know, uh, from the brain, when your hands and your, uh, you know, uh, muscles and legs, they are being uh, controlled. So when you have a problem, you become a patient of apraxia. But how it is linked to language now, <clears throat> we call it apraxia of speech. Now, a of speech is, so since there is speech, it's kind of a speech disorder, right? Now, a of speech is when you have problems in sequencing uh, syllables and sounds, when you cannot properly sequence them, like if the word is beautiful, beautiful, so maybe you are saying futul, futul, Things like that. You can't sequence it properly. You want to utter a word. Just have dekhi, there is an example of Urdu word. Uh, in Urdu we say a word, dast uh, khat. For signatures, we use the word dast khat. So most of the people, they pronounce it as Because they think that this ta and ha, you know, these problems, I think, uh, these sounds, we can't mix them together. I mean, from the, uh, the manner of uh, uh, articulation and the place of articulation. So when the places of articulation, they're, you know, diverse, they're different. So we can't pronounce all the words together. So some of them we elide. So maybe the person uh, who is having apraxia of speech cannot uh, do that properly, right? So what happens? Such children or such people, they have difficulty in imitating sounds. In imitating sounds or uh, also, uh, non-speech movements. This is the problem with these kind of uh, students. Uh, one more problem with them is that, you know, they are sticking out tongue uh, like this. Or if some part of the body is placed somewhere, it's not possible to move that uh, over and over again. Uh, such patients and such people or such students, such children, uh, you know, they, 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 they grow up when they are trying to produce sounds. Like, you know, they move hands a lot. Why? Because there is kind of frustration and they are not able to, you know, produce the sound. You might have heard people like, they say, uh, you go, go, like this. Like, the sound is not coming out, they are growing. They are trying to, you know, uh, take a lot of efforts when they are trying to produce a kind of sounds. So, in apraxia, basically, uh, this is, these are major reasons for apraxia. Problem here, difficulty in producing sounds, uh, unable to sequence sounds. So, overall we can say that this is kind of a speech disorder. Second, uh, I would just like to talk about dyslexia. The third issue. Now, from Greek language, this, this means impairment. Right? Dyslexia. Let me impairment as far as. Uh, now, what actually dyslexia is? Before uh, I proceed, I would like to explain dyslexia. It is a developmental reading disorder which is found in children. Okay. Now, uh, in dyslexia, Asha, uh, before I proceed, even, I would like to give you one more example. Your mobile phone, did it ever happen that its keypad had a problem? Yes. Huh? Or 
your laptop, for example, when there's a problem with the keyboard, you press K, but on the screen you see C or D or F. But this should have been K, but it's not like that. You can relate it to dyslexia. Right? Now, for example, uh, children, they have problem in reading fluently. They can't read fluently. The difference is, when in the, in the keyboard, you press K, and on the screen, you see K, it means there is proper correlation. You pressed K, there was a process, and then you saw K. Similarly, when the child looks at the text and reads well, it means there is proper correlation. But when the child tries to read and is unable to read, it means there is no proper correlation. The reason is, you read whatever is imprinted on the brain here. For example, I, I give you an example. As far as speech is concerned, uh, for example, uh, Rafia. Inja Shuma Benza, Chibar Namishumasti. You see, first I spoke in Chinese, I said, What's your name? But Inja Shuma Benza actually, it was not written on the brain, so she couldn't get it. Then in Persian language, I asked her, What is your plan? I said, Chibar Namishumasti. She couldn't respond, why? Because it is not printed here on the brain. Similarly, I have written here in English. All of you can read. But if we write here in Chinese, in Sanskrit, in Japanese, again you are blank. You will not be able to know why. Because these things are not printed here. Now, when children, at times, they have orthographic code problem. Right? Orthographic coding issue. The coding issue is, you ask children to write K, they write like this. Actually, it's not the mistake of a student, it's mistake of the printed problem that is on the brain here. Because when a child tries to recall, like whatever I speak, I take words from here. The next lecture will be on the same, how language production takes place. Whenever I'm trying to produce language, so I go to my brain and I ask my brain, they tell me what to do. My brain tells me to do this. <laughs> Similarly, when I want to write something, first I look at here what is on the brain, my idea, and that I jot down with my hands here. So dyslexia is when you want to write correctly, you can't write it correctly. You misspell it. You defigure the letters. And when you want to read, actually you can't read properly. Okay, or your reading slow is your reading rate is very slow. You read very slow as compared to the other students. So these are two issues basically. I mean, you ask a student to write, for example, uh, S. They say Sara. So this is what happens at the at the beginning. The children they are learning a language. Now our problem is that we are teaching our language both three languages at the same time. <laughs> we have a Quran class at the beginning, then we have English class, then we have Urdu class. Similarly, while reading, even uh, learning Urdu and Arabic, there are problems. How are letters pronounced? In Urdu, we say Alif, Be, Pe, Te, Te, Se. In Arabic, Alif, Ba, Ta, Sa. So, Be becomes Ba. There is no Ta, Te, Ta, like that. So, these are confusions as well as far as our children are concerned. Like they are learning two, three, four languages. If they are learning Urdu, Arabic, English at school, so ultimately they are learning Punjabi, Pashto at home also. So our children, they are learning four languages at the same time. If a child in the West is learning one language and is confused, so, and in our area, if a child is learning four languages and is confused, no problem then. Fine? So these are the problems. They are having kind of coding issues. For example, as I told you that they cannot read fluently. Now, when they cannot read fluently, here again there is a letter, uh, there is something for the teacher, there is some, something for the parents. It is, not the, it is not an inherent issue with the child. The child actually couldn't be explained how to read. So teachers and parents, they need to pay more attention there. Instead of snubbing them that you can't read, child is putting in 
what child can rest of the duties rest of the responsibilities for the teachers and for the parents okay similarly when they can't read they have problems with phonological awareness as well i mean these uh, uh, children who are dyslexic i mean they can't read well okay they have also less coding issues they have some phonological problems as well in producing sounds definitely when there is no input how can be a proper output there and such students they also have auditory short term memory problem they also have this issue now this reading and writing problem that they have at the beginning now if this problem is not addressed right at the beginning then the problem enlarges it becomes greater in form of language skills in form of grammatical issues in the long run i mean a child who is doing this thing at the beginning and if you ask the child to write for example uh, uh, dear so the child says dear i am bored so b becomes d d becomes b p becomes q and q becomes p 9 becomes like this 19 so what actually happens that they cannot place the word properly on the brain so if continuous practice is there then this problem can uh, slowly and gradually be solved uh, then we have stuttering <coughs> stuttering and cluttering stuttering there is an idiom also uh, where we say uh, okay one more point sorry about uh, this dyslexia children they cannot express themselves properly whatever they want to express whatever is here they cannot uh, produce it properly why because of the disorders that they are having already been discussed so stuttering and cluttering stuttering at least there is an idiom when i somebody says to you yeah, please do this and you don't understand and the person says am i stuttering they don't understand me so stuttering again it's a speech uh, disorder in this one uh children students they repeat or prolong a particular sound and in cluttering uh, usually you might have seen on your mobile phones there is a message they say clear the clutter clutter is clutter is no a lot of material clear through things for example let me put you know uh, my notebook my register my laptop the mouse and my markers and my pens and your assignments on this one so you see it's a clutter sort of stuff right so cluttering is uh when you use 20 words in 10 seconds is this going to really give me my help no what is it again it's kind of a disorder and mostly in every family there is one person who clutters right and then you ask please explain again what actually uh, you want to say so stuttering and cluttering they are again uh, speech disorders and in this one either you have problem in producing a sound or you produce a sound like that that nobody understands so this is we know what is it basically again this is kind of abnormalities in the motor control system right in abnormalities in the motor control system can result into multiple things one of them is stuttering one of them is apraxia right okay now uh, basically the life of a person who stutters is affected a lot such people are frustrated because whatever they want to convey they cannot convey the reasons are number one as far as you know theorists and doctors say they say that first problem is genetics that people stutter because they have some kind of genetic issue number two they say because of certain mental conditions certain mental condition stroke trauma head injury and after that you might start stuttering and finally they say uh, maybe because of some emotional trauma because of some emotional trauma uh, they may start going for 
stuttering or fluttering. Last uh, number five, uh, we have dysgraphia. Impairment disorder. Graphia means writing, graphs, okay, uh, portrayal, representations. So again, now in dyslexia, there is a problem of writing. There is a problem of reading both. And in this graphia, there is a problem of writing only. This graphia means bad handwriting. When you cannot write properly. Isme the problem of finger sequencing. In apraxia, there was problem of sound sequencing. In this graphia, the problem is finger sequencing. You, you want to write something, but you know, you can't actually write it properly. But, but, apart from this, apart from this, bad handwriting and orthographic coding, there is another issue, and that issue is coherence. You actually cannot connect your ideas. Your topic sentence is about Karachi, and then you write about New York. You start off with, you know, sports, but then you talk about boredom, why are you going to hilly area? So the problem is actually you cannot carry your ideas properly. So this issue is also uh, fall, also falls under dysgraphia. When you cannot write well, your handwriting is also bad, you have orthographic issues, your coherence is not good. <coughs> so uh, then uh, one more issue is in this one is that you know the problems that you are having in dysgraphia. It continues throughout the life if you don't try to cure this one by uh, practicing. By you know, most of our students they write either in the midterm exam or in the end term exam. After this and before that, they never write anything. Uh, yes, what they write is that they, you know get another copy of the assignment to submit the assignment or they go for CCP. You know, CCP cut, copy, paste sort of stuff and you know rephrasing. But as far as writing is concerned, as far as generating ideas is concerned, that is not very, very consistent. And uh, they make uh, mistakes, for example, if, if this is a problem, so if first problem is okay, second problem starts, if the third problem is okay, the fourth problem starts. Finger sequencing actually, when you write uh, when, so a person may write. Uh, Like this. The problem is with this one that they are unable to write properly. Next point uh, that we can talk about is now these are certain disorders which are directly linked to languages. Then there are certain disorders they are not linked directly to disorders but they are indirectly linked. I mean the disorder is the greater one but language is also there. For example, first one uh, we can talk about is. Down syndrome. Now, Down syndrome, you know, uh, we are thankful to the Almighty Allah that He created us as a normal human being. Otherwise, you were created how? With a clot of blood. And that clot of blood had, you know, good chromosomes? How many chromosomes are in total? 46. Total 46 chromosomes, there is one chromosome which is called chromosome 21. When it has an extra copy, yes. then you are abnormal. Then you are this patient Down syndrome. Oh my god, it is genetic abnormality. Because it is connected to chromosomes, it is connected to your birth, so it is kind of a genetic, genetic abnormality. Now, in this genetic abnormality, basically your growth. You see, first you are this much, this much, this much, this much, this much. No hair, long hair, big hair, long hair, long hair. You see, small face, big face. Got it? So, this is called growth. I mean, as we talked about Piaget, Vygotsky, and so on, they have told us about a, how human, you, you know, uh, the time, egocentric stage. The element of conservation that we develop. You see, if you ask a child, if I give you uh, $3,000, what will you do? You say, I will take chocolates. 
But if you ask an adult, I give you one thousand dollars, what will you do? You say, I will do this, 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 this. Why? Growth is there. Major issue in this one is there are developmental issues of growth. Growth of brain and your your physical and mental growth it has problems. Right now, uh, one question I would like to ask you, Mr. Dilawar, what is a normal IQ? Sir, somewhere between like a hundred, hundred and thirty to hundred. Hundred and. Hundred and thirty to hundred and fifty. Hundred and thirty to hundred and fifty. Anybody else? A normal human being. What is his or her uh, IQ? In one twenty. Above one twenty. Okay. Yeah. Anybody else? Tara. Hundred and ten. Okay. Now normal human beings they also have variety. Some people are here normal, here normal, here normal, here normal, 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 normal. right? It starts from 85, it ends at 120. You are a normal human being if your IQ level is this. If below this, you are abnormal. And if beyond this, you are exceptionally good human being, as I told you earlier. Now, those people who have their uh, IQ level beyond 120, for example, 200, 230, so it is also called Savan. Savant disorder kind of stuff. Those people, uh, you might have watched the movie Krish, for example, or there are certain other movies also. Uh, in our limited history of human beings, we have seen that people have it. Uh, these days, you see, uh, in some uh, parts of the world, there are some Hufazi Quran. I mean, how they have done it, they tell you the first letter of every page, the first word of every page. That what is the word on the first page of every part of the Quran, every page of the Quran, right? So what is it basically? Exceptional skills are there. We can't memorize these kind of things. So when you have exceptional skills, uh, as I told you, I, I talked about it at the, at the beginning, right? So Saman disorder, I mean, they're exceptionally good. They say, you see in South Indian movies, there is a person, he heads like that, and person goes, oh, there, and the wall falls down. Earthquake starts. You see? Just a small bit like this. So, exceptional skills people are having. So, normal IQ ends at 120 or let's say 125, and then, now these people, they have almost similar faces. Why? Because there is no growth. Okay? Also, their eyes are fixed somewhere. Okay? And their physical age, their mental age does not go beyond 8 to 9 years of age. Why? Because the major problem in this one is there are developmental delays. This cannot be cured, remember. There is no cure for this. Okay, now since this kind of problem they are having, they don't have any language abilities, they don't have any language skills, they cannot communicate properly, they can't tell what their desires are, they can't tell what they, the problems are having. Okay? They can't actually execute a proper language, whether speech or language, written or spoken. So they need one attendant all the time. Okay, for their needs and desires. Next, uh, we can talk about there's something very important, and we call it autism. Now, autism it is again a neurodevelopmental disorder. Neurodevelopmental disorder. I mean, your neurons do not develop well. So what happens? The result is the children's social interaction is impaired. You can't interact socially. You know sometimes uh, kids, uh, they are at home and when a uh, guest comes, the kids, they don't even look at them. They don't have that understanding how they have to behave, how they have to perform. And people come and say, hi beta, assalamu alaikum. Where is this from? And they are working on their own. They go to other, uh, you know, room. Their social interaction is impaired. They can't perform in society. Although uh, they, they, they walk well, they talk well, uh, they can work well, but overall their understanding of language is not good. They can't execute their language properly in uh, social interaction. So they are having verbal and non verbal issues, disorders, problems. They have repetitive behavior. 
Right? Okay. Their verbal and non-verbal communication is quite weak. It's not normal. It's kind of abnormal. Now the symptoms for autistic children, uh, they emerge before the age of three. And they maybe they are autistic. Achha, problem. What actually is the problem? The problem is in the brain, uh, in the last class we talked about synapses. Synapses and cells we have. You know, there are different parts in the, in the brain. We have talked about, you know, we have, there are lobes, for example, there are synapses, there are cells, there are dihyde, there are sulci, right? So, uh, <clears throat> they, they are not connected. The cells and synapses, their disconnection basically brings about autism, right? That is why children, they cannot uh, do it well. Okay. Uh, next point that we are talking about is, let's say, very important, ADHD, Attention Deficit Hyperactivity Disorder. Attention Deficit, it seems as if you are not listening to anyone, you cannot focus on one thing for a long time. Why? Attention Deficit problem is here. Okay? And hyperactivity is when you are double, triple proactive, right? And alongside this, there is one more disorder which is attached that is called impulsivity disorder. Uh, how many of you know about DID? What is it? Dissociative Identity Disorder. Dissociative Identity Disorder. Okay? You need to go for that as well. Although it's not linked to this one, but you should go for it. Or there is one more. Obsessive OCD, Obsessive Compulsion Disorder. These are certain personality traits. But also, these two disorders, to some way, they are related to language disorders. Language is in some way impaired or affected. Okay. Uh, you can't control your behavior. You are overactive. And you can't focus. These two are the major reasons as far as this is concerned. Okay. Uh, in this one, condition of the brain is affected of that person who is having ADHD. It is affected and then the person either cannot focus or is very, very active, is too much active whenever trying to perform certain things. So there are certain symptoms. I have just got it down. Let me explain to you that the uh, ADHD people are having. Number one, they are easily distracted. They are easily distracted. For example, you are doing BS in English. After this, you want to do AMPHL in English. You tell your parents and your parents tell someone and that someone comes and says Malaba, uh, you do AMPHL in English? In our village, there were two girls. They did AMPHL in English in six. They are still free. There is no job. And one person says, oh, there is one more girl. She is doing AMPHL but she is confused. Now the next day, Balaj will say, I'm sorry, I should not do it. Easily, you are distracted. Number two, you, you forget things quickly, like this. Right? You have this problem. Why? Because there is no attention deficit is there. Therefore, there is kind of memory loss, amnesia kind of stuff is there. You switch from one task to another like this. You switch from one task to the other. So I'll do this. No, 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 no. I'll do this. Mostly it happens when you are uh, at the hotel. What will you do? <coughs> Samosa, ha, take it. Maybe I think pakoda. Give me a chair. Pizza slice is also good. So you can't actually decide and you keep switching from one to the other. You have difficulty on focusing things and you get bored very quickly. Like this. First, you want to go there. When you go there, you say, No, I don't want. To. Usually, children they have this one. They say, Let's go in the car. When they are in the car, they say, When will we reach? And when they leave, they say, When will we go back? You see, you can easily get bored. Okay. Daydreaming. You see, daydreaming. Like your eyes are fixed there. And you are thinking about this, but I